Batman this is Paul <laughs> and Crystal, and he owns Key West First Legal Rum Distillery.com. So, obviously, as uh, one of the guys mentioned, Key West First Legal Rum Distillery, longest name in the history of names and distilling, but it's to prove a point. Nobody, nobody ever in the Florida Keys ever distilled legally. <laughs> there was plenty of illegal people. I got their mug shots out there and actually got one on the back. Of the Those bottom. damn illegals. <laughs> so nobody did it because small island, you do that, your neighbor doesn't get along with you. They're like, you smell that, you're busted. So everything came from Cuba. So they bring everything over from Cuba. These guys you see up here on the wall with these things on their shoulder, they're demijohns. So those, those guys would bring over, they'd have all the demijohns and the high fruit. They'd hide that in the ocean and they'd put it on buoys out there. So when the, when the, when the agents came down, there'd be a little telegraph. Agents are coming because the train's got to take three hours to get down there. Everything goes out in the water and one place gets picked to get busted gets busted, they raid it, tear up stuff, and everybody kicks in, pays some money for the fine, they leave, and then everything goes back to normal. The judges, the mayors, everybody goes back to drinking that. There really was not prohibition around here, so to say, in everything. Um, but, so we decided, I've been, uh, basically my company's called Chef Distilled, so I've been cooking, I've had a bunch of restaurants down here, probably for the uh, last, 30 years anyway, uh, as we've been talking about spearfish or kite border, so decided I wanted to do this because nobody ever did it. Wanted to do something different. So got lucky. Uh, took us about a year to get open, right when we got ready to open. Uh, you all feel this now. The government shut down. So I got oh, approved no. after a year of having everything in here, not making any money. They said, you're good to go, except one problem. We're closing the government, so we'll get back to you when we open. I sat here for four and a half months, went into the, used all my reserves, went to the bank and one man, I need some help and float me a little bit because I can't do anything. And then the day I reopened, there was a line out the door like that. I went to the bank the next day with a big old bag of money and I was like, all right, man, let's go, it's on. So, <laughs> uh, so, cool, so what we do here is a little bit different. Uh, we use Demerara sugar. We don't use molasses. Molasses is normally used for making rum. Uh, up here in Central Florida, where you guys are up there at, and everything up past Okeechobee is all the sugar canes grown. So I have, I buy sugar cane in the commodity every year, and they process it a certain way so it stays super pure. So I get all these minerals and all these flavors. Molasses is kind of the end of the process. Back in the day, molasses was either cattle feed, or you made something to drink, so you didn't, as long as you didn't go blind, you were happy with it. It was like, you know, it was, it was really mineral, didn't have all the good stuff, but you know, sugars it was expensive and used to trade it. So we decided we wanted to use this because of my chef background. Uh, we started making it. Um, we came up with a really clean product because I get a bad, bad headache from alcohol. I mean, like right away, my buddies always when I open this, they're all like, "You're gonna fail miserably." I'm like what? And they're like, "I never seen you. With, you're at the bar and hanging out. You got one beer all night. And there's an there, You got." I'm like, yeah, because I don't invite you over to my house and drink a $120 bottle of actually really nice stuff that's not going to give me a headache. So that was the idea here, to make something really clean and really nice. Um, the, the cool thing is, as you see all these barrels around here, we get brand new barrels, um, and then we get some I bring over from Europe. But what we do is, as you notice, if you guys drove down here, it's a little bit of a drive from up above Miami is where all our water comes from. It's a long way. So I take my barrels to make sure they don't leak down the end of this street, fill them up with salt water, bring them back here, let them sit when I make sure they're not leaking. I dump out all the salt water and I'm basically curing the barrel like you would some fish or some beef, getting rid of all that fresh water. And when I look in the barrel, I see that brine, that white brine, I'm like, it's ready and then the high fruit goes in. So it gives us like a real unique taste for us. So it makes it Key West. Because people always say the same thing. Oh man, so you, you, you make like the best rum in the world? I go, nope. And they're like, what? I'm like, no. I, I, what's the best rum in the world? I'm like, I, I don't think there is one. But you go to an area that actually makes the rum and uses local ingredients and you get a flavor from their home. Me, we had a sign up in here and it said, because uh, it gave me so much crap about putting the barrels in the ocean and said, idiot or genius, what idiot would put a chef 
in charge of a distillery. And we made fun of ourselves because people were. And it turns out now, I'm not all good. now, nine years later, it's the thing to do and everything. And unless you have a big old ocean in your backyard, you can't do it. So it makes it, you know, it makes it unique to hear. Um, so once we're done using, our, you know, and obviously here's our stills. People look at the stills and they kind of go, okay, so you got two stills. Because you're small, you go twice as fast. It's not twice as fast, we actually go twice as slow. So when we get done, there's some tanks you'll see over there bubble, and we're done fermenting. We put it in this still. When we pull all that clear alcohol out, so whiskey, rum, any alcohol, it's all clear. We pull it out, it's super oily. That's the stuff that gives people a hangover. It comes from impurities over there naturally, and from a chemical reaction here. So once we got that oily substance, like you could put some stuff in it, and cut it, and do some weird things, and some other chemicals, and, you know, probably ruin people's weekend, and stuff like that. We take that alcohol, and then we put it in this still, and then we let it raise up through the palms, and we, it, and we bring it out at like 148, 160, something like that, right where this special flavor is, and then we get it into our barrels, or we start finishing it with different flavors. We make all of our extracts and all that stuff here, I can let you look inside this barrel over here because nobody ever gets to really see really what's inside of a, what's inside what's going on in the barrel. So I had to put a Lexan head on it so people could actually see it aging. So this 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 alcohol in here is about a week old. So you can already see it's starting to get some color because that's a white light behind there and everything. So and these guys got a bit of a patent on the barrel. And every day here we get an expansion and contraction, so it's like an accordion squeezing this thing, sucking it in and out of the wood so we can get all the, I want flavor out of it. I use science. I don't, you know, this thing I gotta wait 10 years to have a good bottle of rum and stuff. Like, my, my, my son's like this, and eats like a horse. So if I gotta wait 10 years to be able to make it, get him to eat, man, we're all gonna start. So we started using science and some really old school stuff from like the 20s and everything, and I can get, I can get great product in a year and a half. You know, like so. You know, and we do everything right in this room, this room. This used to be the old Coca-Cola bottling factory. Um, oh, cool. Here's some, uh, like, these bottles. These bottles say uh, Key West on the bottom. They were made, and this was all done here in 1903 to 1980s and everything. So when I was digging up in here, and yeah, right? It's got some weight to it, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, there is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we oh, a, holy uh, shit, yeah. It's a heavy ass bottle. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm waiting to get paid. <laughs> so, uh, I'll give you a real quick one. So, this is called Bin Mariani. I found a couple of these bottles that are covered in lead. Nothing was in them. I had a guy put the test strip in here and everything, tested it. So, what was in here? What they used to make Coca Cola with? Cocaine. Oh, and the coca leaf. Okay, so they used to make white Bordeaux and coca leaf down here and drink it like crazy. Thomas Edison would be down here all the time drinking this stuff like crazy. And these things like Life's a Series of Naps. He's like inventing stuff all over and love being in Key West. Because they were drinking this, and then when Prohibition hit, they couldn't use alcohol anymore. So Pemberton and like Coca Cola said, let's just put a little more of that coca leaf in the Coca Cola. And then, you know, Coke adds life. Makes everything nice. Coke and a smile. Everybody was basically just wax drinking Coca-Cola and outdoor prohibition and everything. And that's how they became so like they became so famous. Down here there's a ton, a ton of history, man. You know, there's always somebody's done it, somebody's got busted for it, you know, and everybody knows everybody. Her she wedding lovers? Three lovers in concrete. Oh my god. Overboard. Yeah, she was something else. One of our bad girls of Key West history. Wow, that's really so, cool. So there was no context leading into this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, who was that that would throw people in concrete and throw them in the ocean? Her name was Spanish Marie, is who oh. she went by. Uh -huh. And she was a rum runner between here, Havana, and Miami. She had like a rum running triangle. And she was super ruthless. And apparently, whenever someone would get too close to her money and her secrets and her rum, of course, she would take them for a nice little sunset sail. And only one of them would come back, apparently. <laughs> I think it was always her. <laughs> so yeah, this one is incredible. We'll start with a little mojito shot for you guys. Yes, please. So this is the original recipe. 
straight from Cuba. We sailed there on a 70-foot schooner and brought back that first recipe from oh, Havana. Wow, so it's a little different from the American version. They taught us different techniques to bring out all the flavor from those ingredients. So we'll give you, this is like a little mojito shot here, mm. but it is so And that's so what you're going to teach us, right? That yeah, we're actually, nice. we're not doing the class right now, because oh, we have a class okay. that's booked, it's but okay. we can go over um, all those different Ooh, ingredients the there. The the Super important, you got our Demerara sugar, cheers. And that one's made our uh, coconut rum. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's delicious. That's my favorite cocktail of all time. Oh by far. wow, that's so smooth. And it's Damn. the rum makes a big difference, but that Cuban recipe, oh. it makes all the difference for sure. That one's so good. We use our Demerara sugar. Um, you see it's kind of honey in color. That's the sugar we use to make our rum next door. So it has a lot of richness and flavor. First press of the cane. You put two spoons of that right into the glass. And then we put a half ounce of our Kermit's Cleveland. Cheers. Cheers. We're going to put the cap on before you shake it. That one, it's super rich. Key limes have like a lot more pop to them. What is that guy? Is that him? We saw him. <laughs> then like, he's what famous he too. He's we famous yeah. as well. Oh my god, it's the guy. It's the guy. It's the guy we saw earlier. Oh my god. Isn't he amazing? Yeah, we were like, we love you. <laughs> That's part of what makes that mojito so good. It's Kermit. That's really he makes cool. all of his stuff local here in Florida, so it has like so much richness to it. And then we put um, a little bit of mint. So you want to put about a stem of mint, so like 10 to 15 leaves on it. Give it like 20 muddles. That's all in the recipe. And then you pour that rum over, a little ice, and some club soda. And it's, it's perfect Oh my god, it's perfect. We'll get you another splash of food. Oh, yes, no <laughs> yeah. Now, this <laughs> one is that Pinot Noir barrel age. Are you both sampling these? Yeah. Yeah. So yes. remember, it yes. is quite strong, so just kind of touch it to your lips okay. at first. And then you can decide if you just want to sip it on its own, or you can mix in some of the punch if you want to. Um, I have some Coca-Cola as well if you want. But that one's so good on its own. It's aged in the red wine barrels, because she used to drink red wine in her dark rum. So we age it in there, and you can get those tannins, a bit of caramel. That one, it's just so easy to drink. It's become our biggest seller for seven years. Wow. And the name too. Is like yeah, that doesn't and hurt. Story. <laughs> the story. Oh, yeah, the story. Yeah. Wow. Fire them, Jake. Fire them. <laughs> is, this, is this your favorite? So this is our biggest. That's your biggest. My personal favorite. I like even darker, like the heavier flavors. So yeah. we have. Um, That's good to sip it. That one's a little lighter, super complex with that French oak barrel age and all the tannins. This one is super heavy in comparison. Okay. It's, it's my personal favorite of our original lineup. The raw. The raw. We like it raw. <laughs> yeah. Everyone says yeah. this one is like me, and then this is. Okay. All the way. <laughs> so you're the bad bitch and he's raw. That's right. That's oh, okay. Right. <laughs> um, is everything in the the Demerara? Demerara. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, um, it's the base of all the rums that okay. we showed on the tour. Right. So right. it all starts with the sugar. And he said that other rum factories do um, molasses. Normally, Usually it's molasses. Traditionally, okay. molasses is like a byproduct. What's kind of left over when you're making the crystals from the cane. So it was always very no, expensive to get throughout history. Oh. So rums would be made by that because the distilleries get it so cheap. Yeah. But Paul is a chef. He doesn't cheap on right. it. Yeah. 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 Everything's yeah. Got to be bad. <laughs> It's easy. Yeah. This one you'll you taste like chocolate, vanilla, maple. Oh, this is the vanilla. All right, this yeah. is the raw. Super big up front, buttery on the finish. Did you want a little sample? Oh, I'm okay. You're good? Yeah. Anybody else wants a sample? Yeah. This is vanilla. It's, the bad's it's really from the good. barrel. It's oh, thick. Yeah. So all that flavor is, is from the No, this is raw. So you just tried the bad bitch. This is the raw. You like this one? Yeah, it's like, it's yeah, almost like, syrupy. It's so good. <laughs> Can we do like the bad bitch and all my crew? Of course. Yeah, today we're the mojito. I know. This is dangerous. This is very dangerous, Rob. I think the mojito. I think we're going to have to do the mojito. Did you try the mojito? I did not. Okay. Can we have one of the mojitos? Mojitos. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we'll give you guys a little bit. Okay, uh, Ted needs a mojito. <laughs> oh, it's 
good. So this is that coconut mojito. Demerara. 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 We're, we're quizzing each other because it says mojito class quiz. What sugar do we use? Who is Kermit? Kermit is... Who is Kermit? I don't know Kermit. Kermit, that's the guy on the bottle. Oh, yeah, yeah, your friend. Oh, that's Kermit. Yeah, lime, lime green oh, chef God, man Kermit. with the little puppy. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, so how is he associated with you guys? We use his lime juice. He so does everything. Lime juice. That's why he's in green. Here, yes. oh, he's like the green oh. lime juice. That makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I get it now. <laughs> we were like, that guy looks so cool. Hey, it's Kermit. It's Kermit. Oh my god, that guy's a legend around here. This is awesome. Ooh, key lime rum pie. That sounds amazing. Key lime rum pie? Oh my gosh. Oh, dude, you can get it shipped to you. 